Okay, so uh, Dr. Sekhar, good to see you uh, again uh, in this webinar. And uh, guys, uh, I'll tell you brief, uh, briefly about Dr. Sekhar. Uh, he's working with Encro. Um, and uh, his specialization in an analytical chemistry and uh, he has knowledge uh, knowledge about biotechnology as well as herbal science and um, i think he is working with enchrome since uh, more than 5 years now um, so i will not take much of time and uh, over to you dr saikat very warm welcome thank you ma'am megna ma'am thank you very much and uh, on behalf of the entire enchrome team I, on behalf uh, myself, Dr. Saikat Malik, will be taking this session uh, on HPTLC and uh, drug discovery from plants. So, once again, I welcome all dear students. Hi, hope you are doing well. And uh, today, we'll be cruising through this lecture, uh, understanding how HPTLC is useful for many of the drug discovery aspects which are there and uh, let's move further i'll just start sh uh, sharing my screen so that uh, i can present my presentation so i hope you are able to see my screen uh, due to some uh, technological issues uh, some slides may not be uh, very much uh, clear to you but uh, Otherwise, this should, uh, with my commentary, you will be able to understand most of it. So uh, let's uh, understand. So we'll, we have previously met and uh, we had seen what uh, briefly HPTLC is all about. Uh, uh, as for my knowledge, uh, at your, uh, uh, during your graduation, you will be coming around TLC a lot of times and uh, you must be practicing for your experiments. Uh, but HPTLC is uh, a totally different subject. And if I tell you in terms of uh, layman language, uh, what column chromatography is to HPLC, uh, same way TLC and HPTLC are quite different in approach. And uh, the quality of results which you get on HPTLC is totally of uh, very high and similar quality of uh, any other chromatographic technique, uh, which is very different from the basic uh, uh, aspect of uh, analysis. So when we talk about uh, drug discovery from plant molecule, you know, uh, we have a very huge database, the Indian medicinal plant uh, database is huge. Uh, and uh, potentially, we have a very good botanical background because of, because of the Ayurvedic uh, text literature, and many other Indian systems of medicines such as Siddha, Yunani, they all comprise upon using natural elements to make uh, drugs. Uh, when we move towards the concept of uh, making a plant drug discovery, there are many aspects associated to it, like whether you are looking forward to a component from the plant which can be made into an effective drug. One of the popular examples is artemisin from uh, Artemisia annua, which is a an very popular anti-malarial drug and used uh, very largely and distributed over wide uh, applications, this drug. So uh, this is again from a natural resource. The invention of penicillin we all know has also come from a natural resource. And uh, they are very close by the plant uh, diversity is very large, making uh, the nature has all answers to various types of ailments which we have. And that is why the matrix or what we are talking in the terms of analytical field, when we want to analyze such kind of uh, matrices, it is very challenging because we need something to uh, be carefree and uh, an analytical technique which you can use carefree without any problems. And that is exactly what HPTLC is all about. So with the uh, basics of the last time what we had, we'll just move in further and uh, I'll what I'll do is we'll just first brush up the older technique and then we'll discuss on how are the applications into uh, drug discovery from plant. So let's move ahead. Uh, first of all, uh, I extend my greetings to all of you and hope this uh, one, one hour 15 minutes uh, becomes very fruitful and a lot of knowledge you can gain so that uh, when you are in the next level of research, this inputs definitely facilitate you to 
move ahead and bring out molecules which may have novel use in near coming future. Uh, we have a lot of presence in online content. Uh, you can access us to our dedicated WhatsApp number as well as our email ID is there. Uh, in case you have any question answers, you can just write it down to the Q&A session, which will be taken up in the last 15 minutes and whatever questions uh, will be unanswered. Those will be also answered by my team. Once we receive all those queries on our mail ID, we will uh, write you back and uh, see to it that your queries are totally solved. So moving ahead, this is on a webinar platform. As I told you, there is some technical issue with my laptop. So it's uh, a few slides are uh, not that much clear, but uh, will not bother much because uh, what I want to explain is covered in my all other slides. So if you see in uh, you must be working heard about TLC, thin layer chromatography and how it has been typically practiced is uh, in the age old techniques, you had a paper and on that paper, you spotted some either pen spot, which is a form of an ink or you had a, a paste of chlorophyll and then used to uh, dip it into a solvent that is your mobile phase, allow it to separate over that uh, uh, stationary phase, which is your paper and all the components are getting separated out of it to understand what is the composition made of. So this is basically a separation uh, science, which is there. And that is why thin layer chromatography was the most rudimentary, but at the same time, very rapid, a benchtop technique, which is being practiced. And definitely when you do your practicals, you will be undergoing through this uh, test because it is a very basic format of H, uh, chromatography. Then when we move on uh, to the development of uh, thin layer chromatography, now this uh, technique had a lot of advantages and because of which a uh, few companies started instrumentalizing the process of uh, the entire uh, separation. Uh, the instru instrumentation was uh, introduced to give better outcome, to document the results and as well as to get a lot of data from the simple format of TLC. One of the biggest drawbacks of the TLC is that you cannot store this uh, chromatographic separation in any format because these plates or these uh, papers which are there, they generally get degraded after a month and so. And so there is no way you can store this data. And imagine at that point of time, they did not have cameras also to capture, which we have access, but then these cameras are subjective to uh, various levels of photography levels. Some will take bright images, light images, different colors. It's, it's a blue spot, but in your phone, it is coming out as a green spot. So uh, the documentation was really, really very, very weak. And even today, many of the pharma companies, they just uh, do TLC and they are happy with it. But uh, the trend has started already to change in because now when you have an option to do the documentation, controlling the instrument and develop uh, quantitative data apart from other applications, which I'll be discussing in this session, uh, it is totally a different format. Uh, previously it was not there, but uh, now it is there. And uh, it is also backed up with the regulatory compliances because uh, I cannot just say my uh, the technique is okay and you can use it. But as long as you have some methodology which is associated, uh, defined by any of the pharmacopoeias that yes, you have to do it in this way. And the standardization basically helps in giving reproducible results when you do from lab to lab and uh, minimize the variation. So when we talk about the development, the instrumentation was started Slowly, slowly, step by step, as you see the different steps, the software control came in GLP, that is good laboratory practices, compliance was achieved. And uh, slowly in 2016, HPTLC methodology got appreciation into United States of Pharmacopoeia. And uh, also it was adopted, but other pharmacopoeial commissions also like Chinese Pharmacopoeia and uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, European Pharmacopoeia uh, the uh, WHO monographs and Indian pharmacopoeia is also having it. So the technique is officially being published and uh, they have a strategic uh, technique of how it is done. So without go going much into detail right from here, I will slowly go in detail as we cruise along the presentation. After that, uh, in 2021, our latest uh, a contribution of total automated, totally automated HPTSC systems were launched where you can do 
without any uh, zero contact uh, you can just have to place the samples and mobile phase and that's it everything is done automated you don't have to do anything the plates are taken automatically the application is uh, automatic the entire process of chromatography is automated with the documentation part also which is the main uh, usp i can say of this technology so now when i talk about tlc as you must have seen this is a crude format of tlc and what in hindi typically we told it as a dhabba we apply a spot and we have several other samples which are being applied and separated and when you see this kind of uh, chromatography takes a lot of time then you are able to achieve some separation but when you want to draw a conclusion it is totally difficult because uh, uh, from this aspect you are really not knowing that uh, where is the spot exactly matching with whether it is the upward spot or with there it is the lower spot so if you see on the right hand side uh, this uh, sorry on the left hand side of your screen you see the latest version of uh, uh, hptlc analysis and you see first of all the size difference is there so just note that that the size difference is there so in a shorter distance we are able to use the stationary phases resolution power to separate maximum components and the biggest uh, uh, advantage over here is you not only are looking into with the standard but you are also looking on to other components for example if i am talking about that i have a curcumin plant and i am only focusing on one part that is this methoxy curcumin there are several other parts which are there like bis methoxy curcumin is there pure curcumin is there and so many components but we all feel that it is the typically you know um, allopathic approach that you have a single component and you are just observing it uh, onto the plate and uh, then you are happy with it in your chromatography you are find curcumin i have found so the sample is totally okay there is no adulteration but what about the rest part which is there and whether it is having any contamination or it has been adulterated how do you find out that and this is where hpt hptlc scores and you get a detailed profiling you are able to understand what is at the bottom what is at the top the throughout composition of the sample is known and that helps you to understand what is uh, you are searching for so not only you are looking for your component which is of your interest but also monitoring the sample as a whole you know what your next step will be if your sample is uh, your standard is at the bottom you need to change the mobile phase again redevelop it separate it so it becomes very easy and very clear picture if suppose for example your uh, uh, interested molecule is a flavonoid so generally flavonoids in any kind of uh, non polar mobile phase will be traveling to the um, upper part and what happens is it will come on the upper part of the plate uh, and because of which what happens is uh, Uh, if you are just interested into that then you may not need to uh, see other part so selective uh, screening is very important power which hptlc has you can selectively focus on components which you want and at the same time there is a gradient approach also in uh, in this where you can also separate two different polarity aspects uh, if in the layman terms if i talk about polarity it is something i have something which is soluble in water like for example a sugar which is soluble in water and something which is soluble in oil for example uh, uh, maybe my uh, chili powder which is uh, giving a good response because all the oleoresins from the chili are getting extracted into the oil so there are two components and if i want to separate them onto single chromatographic phase it is impossible but in hptlc this is possible you can separate these two pores apart components in with a single analysis and separate these components so that gives you the intense capability of this technique you can analyze much more larger samples at a very short time so all of us want to do a lot of analysis finish off our task and then enjoy some time so this precisely gives you that advantage where you finish off your task uh, just kidding on the uh, enjoying the time i know we have a lot of samples and we all want to screen we do want to do a lot of r and d uh, you know as a student when i was doing my phd i had millions of sample and i uh, not really millions that's just a little bit of uh, exaggeration but definitely i had few hundreds of sample which i would definitely wanted to test it what if it is this fraction what is if, if it is this fraction what is this sample other sample so i was so amazed and i wanted to test each and every fraction so that i can understand what is coming out of it and that is exactly if i would have had a tool which is so rapid 
and incidentally i had the access to it and uh, so the screening became very easy because so large of samples if i go to some other chromatographic technique i'll have to take care so that i do damage uh, the chromatographic system there are high pressure liquid and everything is involved you have to wait for the detector to stabilize and so many practical problems are there whereas in this technique it's right to go you just have the samples you just take a plate which is your stationary phase so right now what you can see is a stationary phase and on which the sample is immobilized it gets separated and after that what you see is uh, the separation like this so it really gives you an ultimate power uh, when you're talking of the uh, research aspect and generally when you are looking forward for uh, isolating any plant drug this is really the first step where you can start with now when i talk in terms of uh, this technique advantages first of all there is a miniaturization you can see a typically 20 by 20 plate would look like something like this but when i uh, re i'm reducing the size i do not compromise on the separation quality and what i get is similarly the same kind of separation and i can pinpoint which sample and which standard is present at what point so i'm nowhere compromising over here i'm increasing my output because it is molecular in structure so i can have my five colleagues simultaneously working on the same set of instrument and we all generate different outputs so that increases our productivity and at the same time uh, what is advantages i'm uh, miniaturizing my requirements the solvent uh, the time the cost everything i'm miniaturizing so indirectly i'm benefiting and making it a very greener uh, analysis rather than typically other chromatographic systems which are there so uh, let's move ahead and uh, let's see what a typical hptsc setup looks up now i want to brief this technique previously because when we'll move into the actual application part that is where you will be able to correlate this and understand how it materializes so here you can see uh, the first uh, is the applicator which does the job of application where you have uh, 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 we start with the taking a stationary phase we apply the sample onto it and then you uh, develop it with the help of a device known as the adc2 after developing uh, you remove the plate you photo document it with a device that is capable to take zero light uh, zero light i i mean it is extremely pitch dark where the photography takes place of the plate so that uh, instrument is uh, made to take very low light photographies under uv lamps and then you have the scanner which is there which is a chromatogram which you can see that is being the quantitative data estimated from the stationary phase and followed by that when you want to isolate any particular compound you just uh, can take the tlc ms interface you can pick up the spot and send it into a ms and you can identify substances so that is also the next level capability which hptsc has which was not there in tlc you just were seeing with the eyes like okay star component dikh gaya i can see four components i'm happy with it so i have achieved what i wanted to but when you want you can get more you with the same amount of efforts why not go for it you can characterize the molecule by taking it uh, and sending it to the mass so you get the mass data i'm sure you know about the mass spectrometry which uh, analyzes molecule based on mass to charge ratio so each molecule has a different mass to charge ratio and that is basically revolving around the molecular weight of the compound like for example caffeine has a molecular weight of 195 caffeine is uh, present in your aerated drinks which we have cold drinks thumbs up every everything which you take has caffeine in it and uh, that caffeine gives you a single uh, signal of 195 in this mass spectrometry uh, detector so you can easily identify that and this is just an example there are many other components which can be analyzed so that is uh, there then you can isolate compound from the plate uh, if you are seeing from the plate and you want to isolate it that is also possible with the tlc ms extractor and after that you have a derivatizer this derivatizer is actually derivatizing with uh, a chemical reagent which is actually uh, coating the plate with a chemical and that chemical what it does is it reacts with the molecule and it charges the molecule and then you are able to see it if for example you want to see a molecule that is not visible and you want to uh, understand it what you need to do is you can derivatize it and after derivatization has been done the molecules uh, the there is a process of reaction completion which happens you take the plate you uh, place it into a heater it gets uh, the reaction gets completed and once the reaction is completed you see the spots which are there so uh, that is a format of derivatization this uh, 
opens an unlimited tool like for example you have different class of compounds and you can just find out uh, what class of compound is there that is also a possibility if i explain you class of compound there are components which have different uh, types of uh, activity for example you must have seen that athletes take steroids to increase their performance so steroids is a class of compound it's a class of molecules you take paracetamol and you are okay with it uh, your temperature goes away it is a pyretic antipyretic category so like that there are category of compounds which are there in herbs also plant also you have different categories there are alkaloids the other one which i told artemis inanula is a alkaloid and uh, similarly there is berberine from berberis aristata and there are many other components like that you have specialized you have uh, uh, jasmine uh jasmine flowers in which you have saponins which are used for um, other components like uh, they have uh, they are used in shampoos and all the saponin content which is uh, responsible for latheriness the flow froth of your shampoo is because of the saponin content so likewise you can focus on different elements so which is very exam uh, very much uh, uh, important because if you have a plant and you are looking forward to prepare a formulation out of it what you do is you perform this derivatization you uh, select a particular class of compound and then you can selectively progress with one particular approach so this is another class of uh, derivatization we have the vision cat software which centrally controls all the instrumentation and job uh, does the job of not only controlling the instrument documenting and also the report generation it is the central uh, a part where all the data is being stored and can be analyzed referred printouts can be taken which can be used uh, for uh, uh, publications and things like that even approvals and it is very critical because it uh, monitors each and every aspect of the instrumentation electronically and performance wise then you have hptlc quantification which is there you have a standardized methodology validated methods when you talk about hptlc tlc most of you must be not knowing that whether i can quantify what is the aspect of quantification is to understand how much it is there for example if i tell you that okay this tablet is of a paracetamol and it has 500 mg of uh, paracetamol what you want to find out is whether really it is having that 500 mg of paracetamol and that is the aspect of quantification so when i am interested in quantification hptlc is precisely can be uh, hptlc can work on that and you can do quantification aspect and these are some of the aspects which are associated with quantification uh, main thing is sensitivity and uh, um, sensitivity is quite important because how low you can go for quantification that is also very important so as i have told you it is nanogram and picogram which materializes to ppm and ppb levels of uh, analysis that is possible and uh, accuracy precision these are some of the aspects which analytical instrument show have and anything high is ideal if you have low that means it is not good for qualitative it is generally good for identification like the tlc ms interface which you saw is, is only an identification tool so it can be it is a very good tool for qualitative analysis but not for quantitative uh, aspect then when we move uh, there are other aspects of uh, uh, also which is ms hyphenation and all and these are also present so now when you see about uh, plants you see we monitor the plants based on these three categories the rf color and intensity of the bands after you have applied the sample in the format of a band and you have separated it with the, with a mobile face you get so many uh, bands which are coming out from a single sample and each band shows a different uh, aspect of uh, a component which is present in the plant and uh, this is being monitored in terms of rf rf is calculated as uh, the retardation factor or the relative factor it is known by many terms and uh, the representative front and uh, it is basically the location of the band as this is a stationary phase you have the molecule which is stationary after separation happens it is uh, denoted by its position on the plate and that is determined by rf then you have the color you see which color it is whether in the right hand side if you see you see that yellowish color of uh, color which is there in the band and that is the color aspect of the band intensity of the band how dark how light it is there that is uh, being interpreted and also if you have standards you can do a quantitative estimation but in fingerprint these components are observed for all the separated components which have come out from the sample and uh, that you can find out 
for comparison with botanical reference material you can simply compare it with uh, brm and you can find out with that so this is an example of different aspects what three different wavelengths you can see is the first is the green part and uh, then uh, uh, first is a greenish fluorescence which you see and the greenish fluorescence is basically about uh, the 254 uh, wavelength in which we document the plant samples you have the 366 which is uh, the dark light where a uh, short uh, longer uv wavelength of 366 nanometers has been Uh, projected onto the plate and the white light which is there which is with the white light that has been administered on the stationary phase so the references or the reflectance which you observed is being traced back with the uh, detector and from that you can find out uh, the three different activity levels of the molecule in three different wavelengths so this is an example which depicts exactly the same thing now when we talk about fingerprint this is the concept of fingerprint you can see like i have three four five simple uh, samples i am sure uh, these are scientific names on the top you can see but i can simplify you stating that the first one is the piper nigrum that is black pepper which we use at our uh, household uh, activity kalimiri then you have uh, pipli that is piper longum and such like that there are many common spices which are being used like kebab chini and things like that in biryani is you put so how do you differentiate between their quality their uh, their uh, phyto uh, chemical way how they are different and here you can find out there's the hptlc which does a complete profiling initially if i uh, use this marker which you can see i have highlighted with the terms of uh, arrows red arrows a red color and the fluorescent blue color marker which is seen across all the varieties if you see the bluish fluorescence it is present in all, across all the tracks so it is very difficult for me to say whether it is present or absent but uh, if you see the yellow which is very selective to only few samples which are there and uh, also there are other components which are getting separated and based on those patterns i can effectively say it is which type of uh, plant whether it is pipli whether it is black pepper whether it is kebab chini i can tell from that so this is about fingerprinting helps me identify it Uh, from a different sample it is as uh, the same approach which we have a thumb prints so as uh, two persons don't have a similar thumb print same is the concept with the plant material now as we move ahead uh, what precisely hptlc talks about are these two aspects reproducibility and reliability and that is the main aspect which uh, we work on reproducibility is when you want to do the analysis every day to day like tlc if you do there as it may subject to environmental vari variations but with hptlc the standardized methodology is there and using that same standardized methodology you get the same results each and every time you perform your analysis and these results are really reliable you don't have to worry about the accuracy of the data which is extremely accurate now uh, hptlc has many other advantages i have uh, these are just a gist and uh, uh, some some of the things which will definitely strike you as simplest fastest because it is we are revolving around the same principle although it is properly standardized and working on a uh, different uh, instrumentation and things like that but it makes it very simple like you can just uh, start up with a plate and you have the sample in liquid and then you are ready to go so it is really very simple fastest uh, format of chromatography that uh, i'm sure this nobody will disagree with me ultra low running cost and maintenance of course uh, this will not directly affect you but uh, when i talk in terms of running cost and maintenance uh, we all are worried because the uh, money is shelling out from in some or the other way from our uh, side our pockets and then we need to know whether it will give us that kind of output even today if we take a mobile phone we'll evaluate it for its performance we'll see what is a fast processor so we are really very cost sensitive and that is why when you are looking forward for an instrumentation which you can use daily it definitely is one of the aspect when you are you will be going into the later stages of funding and uh, doing your research work this will be one of the effective criteria and then multiple detectors as i told you you can view it uh, with the eye you get uh, electronic data and there is a third aspect of bioactivity where you can hyphenate this technique to a micro a microbial culture which is subjected with uh, some antibacteria and that antibacteria actually interacts with the molecule 
and if the molecule is uh, toxic for that bacteria it becomes an antimicrobial activity it will kill the bacteria or inhibit the growth of bacteria and that is by becoming antimicrobial in nature so you see that neem neem people will say are neem is very good it is having antimicrobial activity but how do you see whether it is antimicrobial activity and that is possible with this you apply the neem sample onto a stationary phase develop it with a mobile phase and then you subject it to a microbial activity you expose the plate to a culture of microbes and if the microbe is a uh, dying it is showing a zone of inhibition not growing that means it has got antimicrobial activity so this is an activity which can be directly such uh, like this you can do many other bio activities uh, definitely you require a good microbiological lab for this but you can get a lot of data so as you see i am talking about different aspects of hptsc these also correlate with the concept that i want to do a plant drug discovery in the sense of my plant hub and these tools are really very effective because tomorrow if i want to have a, a drug like uh, you know um, erythromycin some all of us at some point of time must have taken erythromycin for our throat infections and tomorrow i am developing a drug from the plant and i really want to evaluate whether this drug will be efficacious or not so either i'll have to do a mouse study a toxicity study then you have to do a mouse study then you have to for uh, toxicity then you have to do a rat study that is in vivo studies which it is known as and then come to a conclusion whether it is giving you an activity but with this kind of approach you don't need to do all those things simply whatever you are doing as a chromatography take the plate subject it to the microbial culture and if it is showing you the activity your point is proven and immediately you can uh, bring a new molecule into the market which will be having an antimicrobial activity the biggest benefit of having herbals in uh, uh, this kind of activity is that herbals have uh, like as the nature is evolving we all know the plants are also evolving and their metabolites are also changing and uh, they are developing techniques to survive and that is why these secondary metabolites which are there produced by the plant uh, these are tending to be changing and when you evaluate and bring some novel molecule out of it it becomes really a very good uh, uh, activity and uh, really you know, boon to the human society for getting such a molecule which can replace the synthetic molecules which are there and uh, being very close to the nature you know nature always have the possibility of balance which i always uh, say and uh, that is why it will see to it that uh, the molecule remains active throughout because uh, it has to stay and it has to adapt so that is how the thumb rule goes in and in this bioactivity also you can correlate this you can do a bioactivity study and find out whether it is present or absent and get uh, the outcome of it and finally you get a huge data so now these data how does the data look to you so first of all all i give you a graph okay and i tell you you have three points uh, just plot me a graph through those three points you will plot plot a, a linearity and you will get one single line but if you see if i give you five points and now i tell you uh, tell you ki, okay uh, just uh, uh, plot this graph you will see that the second graph which is having five points is more accurate because you have more data points so the more data points help you to get more accuracy in your Uh, results and that is why even the ICH guidelines tell you that minimum five to six levels you have to give a linearity a data point. A linearity is a concept where you have a concentration and the response. They are being uh, correlated and you get a plotting on the graph, which is known as the response factor of the detector towards a known concentration. So uh, like this, uh, coming to the point is that you get many data points in terms of UV sensitivity that is under ultraviolet light. that is known as uv uh, visible under the white light fluorescence under the short wavelength that is 254 and generally this range is from 190 to 400 nanometers the spectra which is there uh, that is also an important aspect and uh, derivatization that becomes another aspect and finally the bioactivity part which is there with the ms detection part so like that you get a lot more data which is there and very effective which you can use it for your uh discovery of new novel molecules now when i talk in terms of uh, how to perform it uh, you have to take a plate you have to apply the sample any sample which is in liquid you just supply it onto a stationary phase a stationary phase is typically a thin 
a plate of alumina alumina or it may be a glass plate or it may be a plastic and on top is a silica in terms of a very fine sand it is in layman's term and this silica is actually inert in nature you apply the sample you take a mobile phase that is a solvent mixture of one two or four or maybe uh, five also at different times but uh, you take a mixture of that separate it and once you have separated it now you need to document it because as you know tsc has no provision to document it but here you document the result what you have got and after that you do a densitometric scanning you scan the plate and you get the chromatograms which can be used for interpretation so uh, for the quantity and thereby you can do a linearity and things like that so densimetric uh, scanning is also an important aspect after that is since it is non destructive like your molecule is still there it does not get degraded or anything like that you can do an ms study you can do an ir and mr study you can derivatize that molecule to see any specific uh, approach whether alkaloid or saponins or anything like that and then finally you can do a bioactivity study also after it uh, like as i told you uh, to check an antioxidant activity or maybe a, a, a dpph reagent that is for the antioxidant activity so like that uh, this is how the general approach of hptlc is this. then uh, some of the points which make it ideal for use in our daily to daily plant discovery kind of uh, activities uh, i'll not go into uh, into this deep but uh, i have already explained you this in my uh, previous slides uh, now let's also talk about the regulatory aspects before we move on to the application part and uh, we'll see after this a little bit of instrumentation part which is there and then move into the applications so when you talk in terms of regulatory acceptance in hptlc you have these chapters which are associated with the plant discovery uh, sorry uh, botanical origin uh, you can uh, you have these chapters which are there and they help you to uh, uh, go through a fixed methodology when you are doing analysis so the variation is totally minimized so these are some of the chapters which i have highlighted into the united states pharmacopeia also the european pharmacopeia is having that indian pharmacopeias and things like that now um, when we talk about these parameters of chromatography here you see are the standardized parameters of chromatography you have the application pattern the spot band band length distance to solvent level then you have the developing distance the chamber saturation uh the relative humidity these all are important aspects of this format of chromatography which is high performance thin layer chromatography and these have been actually studied and standardized based on this the parameters of uh, usp chapters have been finalized and that is how you get reproducible reproducible study and also the same kind of analysis quality uh we also have working into the uh, now when we move into the instrumentation part we have generations of instrument which are coming up and this is one of the hptlc pro a totally automated version uh, i'll show you the video once we are done with the uh, presentation part because these presentation the videos are unfortunately not working uh, because of the con compatibility issues so uh, sorry excuse me for that so let's move further and uh, now uh, this is a small sample preparation technique now when you talk about plant uh, discovery drug discovery and all uh, people uh, i generally see that people in herbal are developing a quality control method where they are doing soxalate analysis soxalate type of sample extraction for 2 uh, hours 3 hours 24 hours now imagine i am a production uh, factory i am working in a production factory i have got a huge bulk of samples and i need to clear the entire batch uh, uh, it will take me ages if i do soxalate and do sampling of uh, 100 samples 200 samples and then come to a conclusion it is not a practical aspect and i need to clear the data as early as possible so the method should be as simple as possible and based on this concept the simple preparation of methodology is adopted which you can see on your screen right from the sample then you prepare a ratio of uh, 100 mg of the sample in 1 ml of methanol sonicate for 50 minutes centrifuge and use this for your application so this has been adopted in many other chromatographic techniques after being uh, seen from r format and uh, that is how it works now when we move after we have prepared the sample 
these are the applicators which help you to apply the sample onto the stationary phase it is not manually done with any cap capillary in capillary you can disturb the silica you can uh, when you develop this it uh, uh, gives you shabby chromatography and more or less the quantitative estimation is very difficult because you don't know how much volume you are applying and uh, that is why you cannot correlate with the results so it is importantly that you can load the right amount with uh, a shorter application time without disturbing the surface of the silica and uh, many samples in a unit uh, time process so these all things are taken care by our instruments and uh, these are the three types of uh, applicators which we have uh, then you can do something like this standard sample and screen them in situ cleanup like uh, you have a fatty oil sample you you generally massage with oils at your leg or your hair you get some very navratna tail you use it you are very happy with it so uh, what happens is these are medicated oils and if you want to analyze the medicated part it's uh, it is very difficult to remove the medicated from the oil so with the help of hpdc it is a uh, very easy and you just apply it in the center develop it with a petroleum ether remove the fat revolve the plate and then develop it with a develop other developing uh, mobile phase which will selectively evaluate other part that is the medicated part of the uh, herb that has entered into the oil so this becomes an in situ cleanup procedure which can be done immediately you can do a micro preparative work like you can isolate components at 2 uh, to 5 mg levels and then you have a super impose uh, technique where you can spike in uh, the samples onto the plate and uh, this can be used for recovery studies and all then you have the next aspect which is the development part you you do a manual development you have uh, the adc2 the amd2 the uh, pro generation of developers which uh, are based on isocratic gradient type of approach is also there gradient is where you use two different mobile phases two or many mobile phases in subsequent uh, development so that you get a separation of wide variety as i told you if there are two components one is uh, water soluble the other one is oil soluble and you need to separate them with the isocratic uh, approach it is next to impossible but with the gradient approach it is quite possible then uh, with this uh, you have some uh, summary like uh, for the first few slides which we went uh, across and quickly uh, these are some of the stationary phases and mobile phase combinations which can be used uh, no preparation time no decassing what you see is a typical stationary phase uh, plate box uh, uh, over here and uh, from that we take the stationary phase and each time when we want to do a fresh analysis we do it from that then these are developing devices you can do a 2d chromatography i'll uh, go a little bit fast from here because uh, we are running short of time and uh, i do want to show you the video which will be much more informative also the application parts i will be uh, taking some time so uh, this is about the gradient development as you can see with each uh, different type of mobile phase i'm uh, developing it the same sample is getting separated the colors which you can see uh, orange blue green uh, i'm sorry uh, purple then you see the red they are getting separated as and when the different mobile phases changed and that is why you are getting separation differences then this is an practical application lipids are very difficult to uh, analyze these are phospholipids uh these lipids are like present on our skin they are present on every plant surfaces and many other places phospholipids are being used so uh this is an example i am sure you know the term of cholesterol uh, you, uh somebody's parents or you know doctor every time tells that you have to monitor your cholesterol or you have to keep everything in mind so this is an example of that part of fatty acids uh, which are their fats and oil which have been separated with this approach so like that uh, very difficult samples can be analyzed with this approach it has very high resolution power now this is about the instrumentation again uh, it's about the three aspects of the imaging the white light 254 and 366 uh, the instrumentation has a lot more into it but i'll not go deep into it um, and basically it has got many functions um, as i told you i'll not go again into deep into the technical aspect of it you have this comparison viewer where you can analyze sample today tomorrow day after tomorrow and years coming by you can analyze it uh, you can assimilate it 
and then see what the sample is behaving like over the time period to understand how is the uh, variation present. Uh, now, when I talk about the bioactivity part, this is an example showing you that same sample is being screened with different derivatizing reagent in which one of uh, the uh, derivatizing reagent is used for antioxidant activity, which is DPPH. And as I told you, when we are looking for plant uh, uh, plant based uh, drug discovery, this becomes an important tool because on the plate itself, you can screen many samples. So uh, this is one aspect of it. Again, you have the scanner, which does the uh, chromatogram, the spectra. Now, when you are uh, seeing a separation happening onto the plate and you see a spot, uh, you cannot understand whether the spot is single or it is having another two or three spots within that same spot. So we have a function of spectra, as you can see in the bottom part, left hand side, there are the bigger lines, the blue color line and the red color. This is a pattern and this pattern is a spectra pattern. It is selective and changing from molecule to molecule. That is whatever molecule is present onto the plate, it will give you a selective spectra. Uh, there is a purity scan application where you can uh, understand specifically what molecule is present. And if the molecule is not homogeneous, then it will do the different spectra. So by that, you can understand whether the molecule is same or it is different. Uh, these are some of the instrumentation part. Again, I'll uh, skip it across. And this is a proper view of that same spectra which we saw. These are the three different drugs which are there. And each, different, uh, each drug has a different pattern, as you can see over here. Uh, then the use of it is for identity and purity. Purity, I told you to understand whether the spot is uh, homogeneous or it is having two or three spots into it. And then identity also will tell you whether it is matching with your standard and you can understand multiple wavelength. Uh, so you can scan at different wavelengths for different molecules. So you get to know which molecule is giving response at what wavelength and thereby segregate them for studies. So that is another an application. Uh, you can go very low. You can see over here, this example, it is at 210 nanometers, uh, which is very low in any other format. Uh, this is the part of the derivatizer where we actually hit. I'll not I'll just keep it through. And this is the instrumentation part of the uh, derivatizer. Again, I have a video for it, which will be self-explanatory for this instrumentation. Uh, it's used for derivatization, which use very little solvents of 2 ml and all. And uh, from that, what you see is an outcome like this. So uh, you can see uh, this is a synthetic plate, which is being created by the software of our instrument. And uh, each plate is traceable. So you can find out when actually this experiment was done and from which plate this experimental data is come. And uh, based on this, this is what I was talking about. When you have the power of derivatization, you can understand which spot is corresponding to which class of compound alkaloids and here you have around 14 different class of compounds that is being shown. Um, then we have the TLC MS interface, which is used for isolation of compound. So this is also an impressive tool. Um, and uh, this is again the chapter which defines the use. This is an example of uh, seeing an adulteration. You'll just go across it and then you have bioactivity determination. This is about bioluminizer where uh, the bacteria, this bacteria possesses fluorescence. That is when it is alive, it is giving a fluorescence. When it is dead, it is become dark. So here, when you see that these samples, when they react with this bacterial solution, they tend to uh, die. The bacteria dies and that is why these dark spots are established. Whereas uh, the spots where there is no dark spot, it tells that the bacteria is alive. So it becomes uh, understanding whether it is having a bio um, activity of for toxicity. So like that, many other activity studies are reported. And there is an entire list with uh, estrogenic substances, then uh, Alzheimer's testing, anti-diabetic studies. Uh, then you have uh, 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 like that, uh, there are many other applications. Uh, you can write to us to get more papers on that. And you can do it simply very easily without uh, any requirement of uh, expertise, but you'll require a good microbiological lab. So now um, uh, this is about uh, understanding of what is happening at what stage. 
so as i told you when you are drug discovery one of the important aspects if i have a plant which is growing in summer i have a plant which is that same plant is in winter its leaves are gone but the plant is alive and then again in the rainy season it comes again so what is happening chemically and how can you find out that so with the help of hptlc you can uh, take that same sample analyze in all three weather conditions and then simply accumulated one across like this they have shown over here and understand what is happening at what time point and based on that you can draw your conclusions and understand the better uh, secondary metabolite formation and things like that so it really becomes a very very powerful tool when you are doing r and d at this level so this is an just an example just to depict the same thing but this is during a manufacturing process so imagine a herb has entered into a a uh, factory it is being processed and now a formulation is made out of it and this is how you monitor at each particular step what is happening <coughs> excuse me this is about quality control of traditional medicines which you can see method validation is also an important aspect we'll just go through this slides and now uh, let us go about into understanding into herbal applications so as you see in this slide of mine uh, it's is showing you degree of complexity and the degree of purification when you start with a, a big plant it is like you are having leaves roots stems and everything into it and as you go to prepare extracts from selective parts like from the tree you go to the bark part from the bark you uh, from the stem you actually go into the bark part from the bark part you prepare a powder and from the powder you prepare an extract that becomes highly purified so the more purification is there the matrix is getting uh, diversified and because of this the matrix is the part of uh, sample which is of not our interest so it is not of our interest and that part is known as matrix so the more complex part and the most simplified part all can be analyzed on hptlc without any problem and that is the major advantage similarly you have other aspects which are associated to the later stages where uh, the challenge remains and hptlc can handle all these kind of applications now let us move into uh, seeing some of the botanical applications that are there so this is about uh, vitex negundo uh and uh, these two markers are being estimated so we are establishing basically the quality of the herb which is there so if i know that this marker is uh, having a potential then definitely i can isolate it and prepare a formulation out of it which will be a drug which can be very effective against any particular activity and uh, like that uh, uh, this becomes uh, an application then you have ashwagandha we all know vitania somnifera so from that you can identify drugs and use it uh, for uh, the cure of different ailments and this is again first of all you have to standardize the quality of the herb and that is done with the help of this tool kokum which you have uh, eaten in and many of the recipes prepared this is also being tested and that uh, profiling has been done and uh, it is definitely that uh, the markers are just one tenth part of the entire formulation there is the 100 part which is uh, 90% of the part which is remaining and that has to be yet explored what are the other components and that is possible with hptsc so huge uh, aspects are there to do r and d and come out with beautiful novel molecules which are there okay this is a synthetic addition uh, detection uh, not really into our uh, perspective of today but just uh, we'll uh, move across it uh, if you see adulteration that can be also a suspect uh, and can be checked like this this is about curcuma uh, haldi we all know there are another species which is there and if it is adulterated you can check it out uh, steroids uh, stability check so if impurities or uh, some other metabolite is forming that is also very interesting you can find out with uh, hptlc by comparing at the zero stage and other so now uh, we have actually into the uh, food aspect i'll just go ahead because uh, we'll not be going into a detail and uh, with this few i'll be focusing to show you some videos uh, to make you understand entire hptlc concept initially we will be do seeing a entire analysis video followed by that i'll show you some of the 
uh, processes which are happening with uh, in HPTLC, which uh, simplifies uh, standing of processes happen. And uh, finally, we'll take up now questions uh, which are there. So here is an aspect like HPTLC is being used by Indian scientists uh, all over the world. And uh, there is a global platform where these publications happen. And if uh, any of you bound to be doing a very good research work and want to do a publication, it is supported by Ancrum just for your knowledge. And similarly, these are the two participants who have won uh, in the 2018 and 19. Of course, last year there was COVID, so we did not have. And this is our lab, which is actually situated in Mulun which we have a wonderful team and uh, a lot of uh, different R&D projects we work upon. Uh, always a free training service is available from our side. And uh, okay, so with this, uh, our presentation part is over. Now let me show you the video and I'll just stop sharing for a second and then re-divert my sharing screen so that you can see the video. So I'll just stop the sharing. Now let me switch over to my video part and uh, I'll just start my sharing again. Okay, so now you see, I have not gone into some uh, place, okay. Why I have accessed this site is that if you are not able to see the video, at least you know which site to go in and there you can just uh, search in and understand how this technique is being done. So, So I'm just uh, looking for the right kind of application which I wanted to show you. So just a minute. Okay, so rather I'll just... Minimize this, this and let me play this video. So video is about to start, it's just taking. So this is about stevia glycosides. We all know about stevia plant. It's an artificial sweetener. And this video will see how stevia glycosides are being analyzed on HPTLC. So these are the aspects associated with HPTLC steps as I told you. And this is how the entire experiment will be run. So first is with the weighing of the sample and the preparation of standards. These two are important aspects. So it is from the jam in which stevia is being added. So the matrix is different. It's a formulation. The jam is a format of formulation. And now you can see there is a form. Uh, there is a short uh, extraction is there since it is uh, a jam aspect. In our lab, if we would have done it, we would have used a slight heating technique to extract uh, the oil. And uh, definitely, this is an alternate approach which they are showing it can be done now is uh, for the vision cat software which is actually controlling all the instrumentation part you are supposed to create a method and in that method you are supposed to fill in all the details this is regarding to the application step where you are going to apply the sample onto the plate so first of all you use the software to input the details now the sample application is done with the help of an applicator which is known as ATS4 or automatic sampler uh, four. So this is showing you in the software how it looks. The process of application starts onto the applicator. The application is happening onto a stationary phase. The uh, band is applied. So all the application is done. You have to click OK. Now you come out. Now you develop uh, with the ADC2. That is the automatic developing chamber 2. 
Sales has got many aspects associated to it and automated approach to do the development. So it is doing the process of development for you, regulating the humidity, also drying the plate and it has got a fume extractor so you can just uh, remove the fumes and divert it or you can take a can in which methanol, methanol water is there where all the fumes, uh, chemicals in the fume are deposited so that uh, the environment is absolutely clean. Now you have a process of dipping technique here you can see this is one of the uh, older versions of a technique which is being practiced uh, very heavily across and now you also have a newer version I will also show you that post this video. So after this you uh, after you have developed the plate you are derotizing it and now after heating the plate you will observe that the plate is showing uh, the bands under this wavelength that is uh, 366 and white light the plate before going for the scanning you document the image you place the plate in the visualizer take the image which is then automatically again with the help of this software and the software documents the entire result over here uh, in the vision cat software the here you can see that after the reaction process is completed this is how the separation looks in the white light followed by that you see how it will look in the 254 and 366 light so this 366 light has also been image has been taken now the next step is to scan the plate at 500 nanometers this is a selective wavelength of light like you have the whip cure so the white light has all the colors violet indigo blue red so 500 is also one of the light aspects which is associated with the uh, uh, bluish color of light and uh, there you just uh, input the uh, uh, load the plate and uh, with the software again you program it what is the wavelength in which you want to scan it once that is done you just click on continue the scanning process happens and you store the data over here and uh, everything is done automatically you don't have to do anything manually the hums which you see are coming from the sample and each hum is basically a, a spot that has got separated a band that has got separated onto the plate and after correlating it to the concentration as shown in this page you can actually do a calibration of it and understand what molecule is present at what quantity even unknown compounds can be uh, studied in with the related impurity study uh, format here you see a 3d view of all the chromatogram which is there from obtained from the plate now uh, once this is done you integrate it and tell the system that this is my peak so you see there are the four components which have to be integrated and they have been selected over here once the selection is done then you see the results the calibration plot and the results followed by that the report of the entire system so this is an entire process of uh, hptlc scanner now we'll see how the ms part is also incorporated in case you want to do an MS analysis, a derivatized and non derivatized plate is there. A non derivatized plate is being placed into, into this uh, DLC MS interface. Now you secure the spot with the help of this DLC MS interface and extract it with that by pulling the lever. The extraction is done, and once this extraction is done, the data or the molecule is being sent into the software. So here you see that all the spots have been picked up. Uh, from a blank plate at the same location where you see the spots in the after derivatization and there you find the mass to charge ratio data that is the reverted side A which is seen. So this is uh, in short how an analysis is being done and before I wind off uh, this session let me also show you the derivatization part because that is one of the most critical another technique which can be understood and uh, can be utilized by you in future so I don't want to miss it um, and then we'll move on to question answers so let me okay I just missed it 
So this is my this is the advertiser, and as you can see. Okay. So you have this hood. Select the small hood for HP TLC plates and the appropriate nozzle. And to uh, meet the diverging physicochemical properties of the different key, reagents, four different color-coded spray nozzles are implied, and the user can select from six spraying reagent. levels. The process is very unique and that is why recommended I settings you and recipes uh, are provided. Very remarkable and when you want to uh, be very accurately After positioning the plate, the, molecule, the hood is lowered really and completely sealed to, to prevent spraying reagent from leaking from to the outside. Fill the recommended volume of reagent into the nozzle. The spraying process is started by selecting the spraying level and activating the start button. The nozzle generates an extremely fine reagent mist, which evenly distributes in the hood and gradually condenses on the plate. And now you can see the fumes have got... Uh, reagent remaining in the reagent. gas phase is automatically aspirated and collected in the wash bottle. When the spraying process is completed, push the lift button and remove the plate for further processing. Visual observation of the plate shows very high homogeneity, reproducible and user-independent. So this is about uh, the HPTLC and drug discovery part. Uh, I've tried to concise it as small as possible. Uh, there were many applications and which I could have shared, but uh, we are running a little bit short of time. So I will restrict this for more information. Do write us to lab at the rate and in. I hope you have also got understood how the process of uh, HPTLC happens with this short uh, de uh, demo video, which was there. And uh, now I may request uh, Meghna ma'am to uh, take over the session. And uh, we can also have an open session where we had question answers uh, across any student who has uh, questions I, I think so in chat box nobody has yet uh, messaged anything so uh, yeah so students I, I hope you have some queries right please feel free to ask good morning, good morning sir, sir. Sir, my question is, uh, um, uh, in HPTLC, we use a glass slide on which the silicon is, uh, you know, uh, they will uh, be using silicon on that. Am I right, sir? Sir, the, I just wanted to know, is there any particular reason that why are we not using nitrocellulose directly uh, instead of using uh, silicon? So, uh, nitrocellulose... Uh, uh, Stationary phase is also available with Merck, but uh, silica is comparatively much more uh, cheaper and also environmental friendly and easier to dispose of. So that is why silica is given much more preference and mostly 99% of molecules are uh, being analyzed on silica. If you have molecules which require reverse phase analysis, like for example, oils, they require reverse phase uh, uh, plates which are there. In that case, uh, these nitrocellulose papers are very remarkable. Even for isomer kind of separation, nitrocellulose uh, uh, stationary phases are available. It is not technically a, a same paper, but it is a matrix which is been again dissolved, uh, placed it onto a glass or aluminum surface, which is used for this separation. So they are being used uh, definitely, uh, but only in a different format. And uh, you know the most things which are popular, they are more uh, used. And also the cost cutting is an effective uh, concept over here. When I talk about uh, analysis, if I have an advantage of doing it in a normal phase and reducing the cost by one third, why would I not offer it? So that is why uh, the popularity is more towards silica and trying to 
work uh, with different aspects of silica even with the coat uh, coating techniques and things like that for example again if you have fats you can use a nitrocellulose uh, membrane uh, stationary phase or uh, you can coat the plate silica plate with boric acid simply with boric acid solution you can coat it and then you can do oil analysis on that so it depends uh, directly upon uh, what kind of a method we all prefer for but uh, this is why uh, uh, preferably silica is being preferred over other uh, formats of stationary phase of course they have their own advantages and where it is required you have to use them uh, there are uh, amino plates which are there uh, there are uh, pro for proteins there are peptide plates which are there uh, plc grade plates so preparative plates are there then ms grade plates are also there but you always look for a feasible and faster option so that is why you know uh, the trend is like that but otherwise it does not restrict you from using any kind of stationary phase which you uh, wish to i hope this answers your question yes sir thank, thank you. you yeah i have one more uh, question uh, come in the ch uh, chat box by payal uh, madam she says uh, uh, sir where are the labs located for training purpose of students of your company so uh, normally we provide a free training at our uh, facility with uh, mutual convenient dates we take a batches uh, of uh, people and uh, it is uh, generally uh, assigned to a weekend uh, date where you can come in you can take the training and again return back apart from that i think so even shristi has a very good setup of uh, uh, hptsc system and in near future we may also deputing a person who can provide you on site training over there uh also you have nearby uh, uh, institutes which are now flourishing with hptlc like in gtu then you have uh, in uh, uh, in mumbai you have uh, from bombay college of pharmacy and things like that so there are places normally we take uh, those training sessions available with us otherwise definitely uh, these uh, places are available yes uh, megna ma'am would you like to add anything or speak about it good yes yes actually am i audible Yes, yes, ma'am. Nice and clear. Okay, uh, guys, when you come here for hands-on training, we have HPTLC instrument, uh, not a Vision Cat and uh, automatic, but uh, that's a uh, you know a uh, ten years back version with us. So uh, that's okay, but uh, we can give training, and that time we can invite and groom people uh, for uh, you know more detailed demo. That's uh, I hope uh, uh, that is possible, right? Sure, ma'am. It is possible. Yeah. Okay. okay. So. Yeah, more questions. Sir, it separates the like H P T L C separates the uh, components based on the polarity. Am I right? Absolutely. Okay. Sir. so uh, student this is the first uh, instrument that you have to use when you uh, you know come here for hands on training when you validate your grassroots practice you have to know this 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 is the reason why we have arranged this lecture so you have you know theoretical idea first and when we give your demo you will be completely uh, under understood the uh, theoretical part and then you can you know till demo you can understand whole things so please ask the questions anything you are small projects you are doing at your colleges you can ask about that too so as already uh, dr saikal said that uh, it is and already hptlc is now now become a mandatory in each field uh, it's not uh, you know up to the plant science or any phytochemicals but it's uh, they have you know come up with very brilliant uh, you know uh, excellent advancement in hptlc and now it's becoming mandatory in each field so please ask question last chance Uh, before we end the session <laughs> so there is no pressure with all of you students i know uh, you definitely will get questions when you start moving in this direction and when you start doing your r and d 
then suddenly one day you will have one question and uh, definitely we'll look forward to that uh, day uh, in the meantime you can note down this email id la like lab at the rate and chrome dot in i will just write it in the chat box also so that uh, even now or later on when you come uh, have any questions in mind you can just drop in a mail over to us and we'll be happy to help you so yeah uh, questions yes. yeah so don't worry this is not a very complicated topic it's a very simple and uh, since i have to cover in a very short time that is why i have uh, made it really very fast uh, and uh, i do understand that it might be that it is not 100% which may be reaching but uh, definitely 50 60% is what uh, you must have got it and a little bit of reading you have many good books like uh, uh, your uh, uh, thinle chromatography by joseph and sharma which will explain you basics of the principle i am again repeating it is not about hptlc and there is a set of uh, books of around four volumes by dr p d seti who was an ex um, uh, cdtl person uh, cdtl authoritative person uh, central drug testing laboratory and uh, he retired and he uh, prepared these books unfortunately he expired just uh, uh, two to three years back but uh, he had prepared this book and it uh, comprises uh, the book is exclusively written on hptlc in pharma sector also so that is there then you have a book of high performance thin layer chromatography by ike reich uh, that's a foreign author by time publications that also has wonderful insights of the technique and uh, like this once you start searching for these books there are n number of list uh, of books which will give you knowledge on these topics which will definitely um, update you and of course we are there always to help you out with your queries so uh, with this note uh, thank you for all your patience and uh, hope this uh, session was fruitful to you you have a lot of take away with this session uh, over to you megna ma'am uh, once again thank you also to your organization for arranging this uh, uh, and taking special efforts to make such kind of uh, technology cal aspects reach to uh, such students generally you know as a matter of policy and chrome only gives uh, sessions to minimum post graduate students but uh, uh shrishti has taken this pain and we thought in ki okay the students uh, should be benefited and also the young research minds which are there so, so uh, thank you very much for this uh, uh session uh, shrishti organization especially to meghna ma'am and uh, all of you also uh, stay fit uh, do a lot of research work good do good research work and whatever support you require definitely contact us with this note i will hand over the session to uh megna ma'am who can uh, finally uh, yes. conclude the session or take a call on the session ma'am yes sir so uh, uh, we are really always thankful for the and from we whenever we invite any person for a even dab for the technical aspect you you guys are always there and um, you, uh, you have not seen the list of the students but i must tell you that these this is uh, you know the the diversity of this uh, students you will amazed by seeing that because these students are undergraduate student and uh, brilliant batch and the students are coming from all over the india so yeah that's worth uh, doing this yeah. uh, thank you so much uh for your time and uh, in, in to sunday also you have you know accepted this this is uh, this really uh, i appreciate this uh, thank you so much thank you ma'am and just uh, a little bit of apology if you have got some interferences because i am hosting this from my house and you know i have little kids and people around me so there might be some disturbances but uh, session must have been good thank yeah, you it was really informative and wonderful as always and student can uh, you know you can watch the video earlier uh, also dr saikal was there in uh, earlier two weeks so you can watch the video on anibi uh, youtube site so there uh, he has shown some videos too about uh, instruments and all so yeah with this uh, we are ending this and thank you so much once again yeah. bye have a good day yeah. okay guys uh, so i hope you so ma'am with your permission i may now leave this session is it okay yeah, sure. Okay, sure okay okay thank you everybody take care bye
So guys, you can visit Ancrom site uh, for uh, more advancement in the instruments and other research they are doing. And um, as Dr. Saikath has also provided the email ID, you can send the query. Uh, they are very, uh, you know, kind uh, enough to reply every time. So they definitely support you and you can inquire for the training they are organizing. So that's uh, really nice of them. Anyway, uh, uh, we can take presentation and we can start at 2 o'clock. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right? So, how many groups are there? Ma'am, we... Uh... Group number 6. Yes. Group number 2 also, ma'am. Group number 2. 2 and 6. Okay, so we have 2 groups, right? Ma'am, group number 1. Two and six. Okay, fine. So uh, the, I'll ask the professor if he can join. Otherwise, uh, we'll take the presentation. Right? Because later okay. we, we don't have time. Otherwise, I, I would have postponed it. But anyway, we have time today. So we'll take this. So have your lunch. Okay. And we'll okay. start at two. Fine? Okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma